uh, welcome to dealing with materials data. Uh, in this course we are going to be talking about the collection, uh, analysis and interpretation of materials data. Uh, we have started learning R and uh, we are familiarizing ourselves with R as a calculator and uh, plotter. And we are going to continue in this session also to use R as a calculator and uh, plotter for a couple of more uh, problems. Uh, these are very simple problems which you might have done in uh, uh, very early stages in, in any degree in material science and engineering or metallurgy. And uh, so, so I am going to show how to do some of these calculations uh, using R. The first problem that we want to do using R is this, uh, interplanar distances uh, between uh, planes in a crystal uh, can be calculated uh, using X-ray diffraction data. And we are considering an X-ray diffraction experiment on aluminum and uh, 1.54 angstrom is the wavelength of the X-ray used to probe this uh, aluminum crystal. And uh, let us say that we know that the reflections from 2 zero zero planes are uh, observed uh, at a Bragg angle of 22.4 degrees. Uh, we know the Bragg's law, so 2 d sin theta is n lambda. And we are going to use uh, n to be 1, where, where lambda is the wavelength of the X-ray, uh, theta is the Bragg angle. But remember this is sin theta, so this value should go as uh, radian and not as uh, 22.4 degree. And d is what we are trying to calculate, that is the uh, interplanar distance between the 2 0 0 planes, what is the distance, so that is d. So that is obtained and, and we are going to use n is equal to 1. What does that mean? That means that higher order reflections superpose on lower order ones for the parallel planes. Um, so this is known as crystallographer's Bragg law, uh, Bragg's law. So we are going to use that. So so the answer is very simple. So it's just a simple calculation. Uh, so we are going to use R as a calculator. So we want to calculate d, which is nothing but lambda by two sine theta, right? So let's do that. And for doing that, uh, let me also open my uh, notes, right. So we are going to um, uh, do this. So uh, first thing is you can write a, a comment. So let us let's write the script. Uh, right. So you can write a comment. right and you can say um, and you can write another comment right I think it was 1.54 angstroms, okay. And D is the interplanar spacing. So we want to get D is equal to, now notice when we are writing it as a script, there is nothing that appears in the environment. That is because we are not in the interpretation mode. So there are two modes in which you can work with R, uh, one is the interpretation mode where you just uh, keep giving commands and looking at the results. The other one is the scripting mode where we put all the commands that we want R to execute in one place and then we just call R to execute that, right. So, so we are in the, um, in the scripting mode. So lambda divided by 2 times sin, we already know that sin theta is what? Theta. But remember theta should be in radians, so we are going to multiply it by pi divided by 180, right? Okay. So we are going to save this in the scripts as aluminum interplanar spacing. So let us run this script, why is there a problem? 
problem. Okay, let me also add this command. Okay. So, when I source it now you can see that D is 2.02 uh, angstroms obviously because this is 200. So, if you look at the uh, aluminum lattice parameter which is like 4.04 angstroms. So, we are getting the right answer and uh, so, so you can uh, run the uh, run the script by sourcing it. Okay. So, and, and once you source it you can see that uh, the values of d, lambda, theta, etc. which we have entered here are available here. You also notice that there are two ways of giving parameters or attributing values to parameters. Uh, one is using this uh, um, angular bracket with a dash, the other one is equal to. So, you can replace actually all attributions like this. Let us see if this works, save and then source, of course it works. Right, uh, And you also notice that for pi, I just used pi and it worked. Okay. So, help pi will tell you uh, that uh, there are constants, this is a built in constant, there are uh, lots of other built in constants also that are available uh, in R. So, this is the first problem. So, let us go to the uh, uh, next problem. So, the next problem that we want to solve is, is as follows. Okay. Let us consider uh, the composition in a binary alloy uh, given by the variable x b and that is a mole fraction of the b atoms. Let us assume that we are considering an ideal solution that is random distribution of a and b atoms on the lattice. Then you can calculate the change in configurational entropy uh, when mixing happens of the AB atoms on the lattice and that is given by the change in entropy delta S as R xB log xP plus 1 minus xB log 1 minus xB. This is a natural logarithm, R is a universal gas constant and we want to plot delta S as a function of xB. So, that is what we want to do. Okay. So, let us go back and write another script for that. Um, okay, new file, I want to get an R script. So, what is the R script I want to get? So, first we want to define XB and it is a sequence. Uh, so, it goes from 0 to 1 because this is a composition and the let us say that it changes by 0, 1 and del s, uh, so, so before that I need to get r, so let us say r is equal to 8.314 um, okay. and del s uh, is nothing but r into um, x underscore b into log of x underscore b plus 1 minus x underscore b into log of 1 minus x underscore b. Now, oh, I want to know if this is uh, correct. Uh, of course, this is not. And uh, so, this completes and this completes. Okay. Now, I want to know what is this uh, log. So, help log. Uh, will give you. So, it is a log computes logarithms and by default natural logarithms. So, we know if we want base 10 we have to use base 10 and here you can see log x you can give what is the base by default it is base is exponential and you can give other base for example, it is possible to say log 10 base equal to 10 right or log 2 base equal to 10. 
The point to note is that in this case for example, I cannot say base and then uh, the other symbols, right? This is not allowed. When you are giving values for argument variables, that has to be done by equal to sign. But assigning values to variables uh, like here for example, those can be done by uh, this symbol. Okay? So, uh, and typically the, uh, the advice is to assign values using this and use equal to only in such a scenarios. In any case, so help file is useful. So, we know that log is the natural logarithm. So, what we have written uh, is ok and our aim is to plot um, x b and the change in uh, entropy. So, let us source this, yes, now you have this uh, nice curve. Um, of course, I want to uh, uh, you know uh, make it more refined, uh, let us say we plot every 0 0.001, get much more better curve, let us make it still better or let us say that I make it 1 e power minus 5, right. Uh, source, yes. So, as you can see as you are going to linear and uh, linear uh, compositions, uh, you find that this curve is uh, sort of going uh, with infinite slope towards uh, 0. So, it is it's approaching parallel to y axis uh, the y axis. Of course, I can also give uh, one more, uh, but that computation is going to take some time. So, it is uh, it's going to be a bit slow. Uh, but let us do it uh, anyway. So, you can see this small red symbol that is the stop symbol. Uh, it is just a way of R uh, to tell you that it is doing the computations and uh, once uh, that uh, disappears uh, that means it has completed the calculation. Okay? And uh, why does uh, the, the curves uh, for uh, the change in uh, uh, entropy go towards uh, 0 and 1 in both cases in both uh, because this curve is symmetric about 0.5, uh, it, it goes uh, with the infinite slope. That is because uh, the configurational entropy contribution can be very large uh, if you have very lean solutions, very few atoms and very large number of sites that are available. So, the number of configurations are very large in number. So, lean solutions always contribute a lot towards uh, entropy and that is why lean solutions are typically also um, behave like uh, ideal solutions. Okay? So, so let us uh, take this uh, script again and source and so it is a nice uh, code. So, we can save it, uh, we can save as uh, um, configurational entropy change dot or so we can use it for uh, future. So, so this is uh, uh, another example of uh, uh, plotting. Uh, so, what is the purpose of this exercise? Okay, so, let us go and look at. So, the first point to note is that there are more than one way to do things. For example, variable assignment can be done using the less than and dash symbol or using equal to. You can print values to the console just by uh, printing the variable name or saying print explicitly uh, or uh, inf if you want to get information about functions there is more than one way. I did not show that, let me show. So, you can also use this command called org. Okay. Um, So, so it says that it is a function and uh, it takes uh, x and uh, base is the exponential. So, there are two arguments that you can give for log, uh, one is the x for which you are computing the function and the base uh, of the logarithm that you want to compute. So, there are more than one way of getting information about uh, the function. So, help is one and args is another. Um, so, there are many, many different ways and comments are marked in the script using the hash symbol that you saw. Uh, sometimes it is very useful to mark these uh, comments uh, uh, for somebody else who is going to look at uh, your script 
and or also no symbols uh, like pi. So, that is the point of this exercise. So, we have seen that R can be a quite powerful uh, calculator uh, and plotter. So, and, and we are going to see more examples of this because much of the analysis uh, descriptive analysis uh, of data can be done in, in terms of uh, plotting and that is also very useful to understand information for us. So, we are going to see more and more examples of this and uh, this is one of the strengths of R that it can give you good uh, visualization uh, tools for looking at data. So, we are going to look at this aspect more in the uh, modules that follow. Thank you.